Ed Hamilton has been sculpting since 1969, but didn't really catch his first real break until a chance meeting with renowned sculptor Barney Bright gave him the opportunity he needed. And I looked over at Barney's front door, and I said, you know, I should go over there and knock on the door and say something, introduce myself. Well, fear set in, and I thought, nah, what's he going to do? He's not going to let me in there, you know. So I just started to turn the key in the car. And lo and behold, he walked outside to check his mail because his mailbox was on the side of the building. That was opportunity knocking. I immediately jumped out of the car, walked over there very carefully and introduced myself to him and, and asked him, I don't know, remember, verbatim what I said, but it was probably something to the effect, I'd really love to see your studio if possible, you know. So he said, come on in, you know. I spent the whole day, the rest of the day, in his studio, we just talking, shop, talking art. So I could see my fate being sealed at that moment, you know, and, and we kept talking. And he said, well, you know, I got a project coming up, blah, blah, blah. And sure enough, I couldn't wait to get home to tell my wife I wasn't going back to the school system next year, you know. So that's literally how sculpture came about in a full-time, as a full-time profession for me. Hamilton worked steadily, learning about the world of commissioned work and finding his own style in an art form where few succeed. One of his first big pieces was commissioned in 1983. I had a letter from Hampton University. It was actually Hampton Institute at that time. They wanted to do a big Booker T. Washington memorial. And uh, I put a sketch together and a, a life bust of him, and I got that, and that's kind of, and that started this whole public art thing. Another large commission followed with a Joe Lewis memorial, and then a commission that came from a story of lost freedom from another time. For so long, black people have been left out of the history of this country. And through some of these commissions that I've done, brings light to, for instance, the Amistad incident that happened in 1839. And that started out in New Haven, Connecticut. And in 90, someone had an idea of just having a celebration for maybe a couple of days, and then it'd be over. But the best part was when somebody said, well, we have the celebration, it'll be over, then it goes back into the woodwork. Nobody knows about it anymore because it's been a, a well-kept secret for years. And so through the history of the Amistad and the memorial that I did, and again, that was another competition that I had to compete against. So now that opened up that whole avenue of learning more about, well, what, what, what is the Amistad? It's good to be a part of something that you know, you're teaching people about. One of his largest pieces to date is a commission called the Spirit of Freedom. It's the African-American Civil War Memorial located in Washington, D.C. Then it dawned on me, well, Civil War, and the colored soldiers, and they wanted to honor the infantry as well as the Navy. So my first original drawing took in consideration, I think I had like four soldiers, three infantry guys, an officer, and two sailors. Well then that whole process of thinking, wait a minute, I'm giving them more f figures than I'm getting paid for, because <laughs> there was already a set price for this thing, you know. And so one has to be able to, 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 to work within the parameters financially when you're dealing with a commission piece. You know, I mean, there, there's sometimes, it's, it's, you know, the importance of money is one thing, but the importance of the piece overall is more important than what you're going to get out of it. Because obviously it's going to be there forever anyway. So how can I, what can I do to honor these guys then another issue came up, family. So 
I heard that in one of the meetings with uh, one of the committees. And somebody said, you know, it would be interesting if the artist could incorporate somehow within the context of whatever you're going to do, family. Hmm. Okay. Well, once I arrived at the semi semicircular concept of three soldiers and one sailor, I cut it back, cut two out. It dawned on me that I had this semicircular front, but there would also be a back to that because it would be open. Literally, it was the shape of a flag that was unfurling, okay? That was the, kind of the original concept. And so what I thought I would do would leave that backside void and just let the soldiers and the sailors be the primary, you know, looking, looking at. But then, after taking a poll, which I kind of always do when I'm working on something, my wife and other people are architectural friends. Someone said they looked at the model I made and they looked at the front and said, yeah, that's nice, great concept, but when you walk around here, there's nothing back there. And then I got to thinking, you know what? The homeless would throw a blanket over top of this thing and somebody would actually live in there, you know? Well, I didn't want to do that. Uh, hmm, okay, and so I kept thinking, family, I'm gonna... So that's when I modeled a little family concept within the concepts of the confines of that backside. And that's what really did it. So what that did was, it brought to bear the aspect of the soldiers as they go to war, as any soldier goes to war, what do they do? They take mementos of family, they, they're thinking about mom, they're thinking about, you know, their wife, they're thinking about their sisters. I mean, you know, this is one of the few memorials that deal with war, but also bring family with them. Uh, so you can physically see this family that this soldier is literally getting ready to leave to go off to battle. But then somebody said one day, you know, I interpret this two ways because this could be him coming back, you see. So it's open for interpretation. So that's kind of how the spirit of freedom, now, in the beginning, it wasn't the spirit of freedom. It was just the African-American Civil War Memorial. And so I got to thinking, well, what is the spirit of this piece? And so I kept trying to search, and I found a Bible quote for he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under thy wings shall thy trust. And I'm thinking, yeah, that, that, that makes sense. So that's when I put this face up there, see, and then I put these hands. And so that's the spirit of the piece that literally moves this piece, you see. Gives it its life and gives it, gives it the momentum for the men to, to, to move into whatever arena where they're going, you know because uh, they don't know if they're coming back. As a sculptor, Ed Hamilton understands the legacy he's creating with his work. They're lasting reminders of who we are, what we are, and where we've been, and ensure Ed Hamilton a place in history.